Okay. Welcome again, everybody, um, to our Wellness Wednesdays with Walt and Paige and Dr. Sharon. Hope you're having a phenomenal week. Um, we titled this, Have You Ever Been Blasted? <laughs> Whoa, blunt. Right Whoa, to baby, blasted. <laughs> but uh, um. so blasted is an acronym, and we're going to go over that with a couple other things. But um, tonight, we're going to talk about your relationship with food. I have a relationship with food. I like food. <laughs> I like. Yeah, Paige, you like food. I like food. You like food. Yeah. I like salty. We're in food. agreement. Yeah. At least so Paige, so Paige likes salty food. Uh, what, what kind of? Butter. And peanut butter. What? What's your flavor preference? Oh, I like chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, I'm a sweet eater. I like sweets. I can give I, up chips. I don't. Yeah. Sweets. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of thoughts about food and, and a lot of times we look at, um, environmental, environmental situations with food, um, that whole like empty plate phenomena, um, that a lot of us generationally have adopted. You got to finish everything on your plate. Um, and the size of our plates are just like, you know, 10 times too big than they should be, uh, restaurants. Um, and portions. Walt, do you want to talk a little bit about like our relationship with food when it comes to, you know, how it's made and how it shows up on our tables? I I think of food and a relationship with food. I'm going to probably go off topic here, but it's kind of like a relationship with a significant other, right? Sometimes you get mad at it. Sometimes you can't keep your hands off it. Sometimes you want too much of it. And then sometimes you just want it to go away. So sometimes when I'm thinking about food, I'm thinking about a relationship, but I still haven't figured out how I had that relationship. But in the context of how we receive it, right? You know, some of it's culture, right? Some of our cultural her heritages have always been served around the meal. And the meal came in multiple courses. And we may not necessarily have all of those family traditions in our lives today as the family in some cases has gotten smaller over time, but those meals sometimes can still pop up. Secondly, we probably eat out more than we ever did. And, and the restaurant industry just has these giant plates. I wouldn't be surprised if they're not 14 inches in circumference or diameter or whatever mathematical term gets it from one side to the other. Um, but they fill it up and we eat it all. I mean, like so we should go in and order and get the box ready and just go halfies right away. And then we have another meal. Um, so all of these things kind of lead into the practice or the possibility of becoming what? Blasted, right? And and that's a really cool acronym. So Paige, only because, you know, you and I kind of fit a couple of those descriptions I just threw out there. When was the last time you were blasted? <laughs> you I'm blessed every night. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell this is not scripted. Yes. This is live. This is from the heart. But you know, no Walt, one's got nothing on us. But but Walt brings up an interesting topic. I mean, you know, it, it, I think holidays play a big role in in food and our relationship with food because there are certainly in Walt's family and my family traditions around the holidays. So on Christmas Eve was always crab spaghetti with with Walt's mom. She's, she's Italian, and uh, we would have the, the king crab's legs was cooked in, we call gravy, cooked in the gravy and the spaghetti gravy. And then we, I used to have to sit on the other side of the room because I couldn't watch all them get, I don't like dirty, but they would get it all over their hands as they were cracking open these things and eating them. But it was a big tradition. And when Walt and I first got married, um. I, and I became an instant mother because Walt was a single father. And I'll never forget like the first meal we ate together as a family and Ashley, cute little Ashley, she was 11 years old. We finished whatever we had for dinner. And she said, well, what are we having for dessert? I was like, dessert? Walt's mother made dessert for every meal. There was dessert. She would make, she was a baker too. So she would always make something 
Um, and Ashley grew up in the house and was used to that. I'm like, have some Oreos. I don't know. Like there, it was, that, <laughs> that wasn't my family. We didn't have dessert like that. Yeah. Um, and then for us, Christmas day dinner is always at my parents' house and she makes filet and we have filet and we have heart attack on a plate. Although I make my own version of heart attack on a plate now that doesn't have potatoes in it, but uh, in tradition and yeah lots of filling up that plate yeah. cleaning it up and having more right uh -huh. yeah you know and I think that's the story I, I won't get the story exactly right but the idea of um you know the meatloaf and the pan and and I apologize to whoever created this but I did hear this where um through three generations like hey mom how come you're cutting off the edge of the meatloaf before you put it in the oven and she's like I don't know your you know your grandma used to always do it and so the little kid went to grandma and went grandma why do you cut the end of the meatloaf off before you put it in the oven she's like I don't know it's because my mom used to do it and the little girl you know generationally these are all alive people went great grandma why are you cutting the end of the meatloaf off why do mommy and grandma do this because the oven's really little it didn't fit in the oven way back then. And that was a tradition that we carried down without asking the question, why do we still have to have a piece of meatloaf that's been cut off? Why do we have to have a 14 inch plate when we know it's not good for us? Why do we have to supersize everything for a dollar? Um, because that's not healthy for us, right? And I think our relationship with food, um, it, it changes over time. Of course, as you get healthier, it changes. I love food, I eat food. It's great. I just choose to eat. Uh, well, let me rephrase. I eat healthy most of the time. I choose to eat to fuel my body. But I'm human. And there are times I will eat my sweets. And let me tell you, as soon as the sweet hits the brain, I can't stop. And what's leading me to the sweet? Being blessed. I'm blasted. You're so let's blasted. go through the, I think we got to tell everyone what blasted is. Can we let's tell everyone what blasted is? All right. Number one, bored. Okay, raise your hand. Have you ever eaten out of boredom? Okay. Rainy afternoon in the recliner. You know, there's a Netflix series on, and I'm going to watch the whole thing. Okay. What do I have? You name it, dream it. It's there. It's that. Boom, boom, boom. And then what's happened? It's gone. Good. What's the L? Lonely. Lonely. Have you ever eaten when you're lonely? Again, unscripted here, guys. <laughs> this is real life here. Heck yeah. It makes us feel good. Or the thing that we're eating we think is making us feel good. Right. We feel like we need a reward. So we're going to reward ourselves by having something, going out to buy something or treating ourselves to something because we're alone for whatever reason yeah. um, that may be. And, um, you know, it's a reaction. It's that relationship um, with something. Um, to help us feel good instead of processing whatever that is. Right. Mm -hmm. So the A stands for angry. <laughs> Paige might know this one, <laughs> right? Oh, so, I have anger issues? No, 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 because no. you know, it's because no. you, you mouthed it. I saw it. I'm like, well, you know, if we're angry, it happens to me when I'm angry, I want to feel better. And what makes me feel better? Food, right? It's lack of processing of our emotions. And we try to soothe ourselves with food. Okay. Or I will, food? I'll show them. I'll show them. I'll eat that whole cheesesteak all by myself. I'll show you going to say that about me. You're going to talk like that about me. I'm going to eat that whole pizza. I can eat that whole pizza. You want to watch me eat that whole pizza? I can do that. Yeah. The whole, like I had, I wrote something yesterday on my page about the fact that like people, do you never eat carbs? Yeah, I eat carbs. And sometimes I've taken those frozen gluten-free pizzas. Um, I can't eat the whole thing. It's just too much. But like, uh, why like you know i'm gonna show you i eat carbs here i'm gonna eat a lot of them right now like that doesn't that's not it's pointless right all right so we're bored we're lonely we're angry s 
sad. We're sad. Is anybody reading out of sadness? Somebody, oh, somebody, somebody <laughs> stepped in our sandbox and did something we didn't like and it made us sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to sandbox feel sad. Sandbox sad. Yeah. Okay. T. Tired. Tired. Oh, I need to eat something. Pick me up. I need to eat something because I got to stay awake. I'll I'll grab a Snickers one. bar. If I had that, if I have a Snickers bar, I need some sugar. Let me get some sugar. I'll have a, I'll have a candy bar. I'll have a cupcake. Yeah. And then how does that make you feel after you eat it? Does it actually help you feel more alert, more more awake? It hasn't for me. Go ahead, Paige. I, it's mint for me at work. There you go. Sugar or unsugared? Oh, sugar they're sugar. Oh, they're sugared. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you never think of what a pack of lifesavers will do to you from a sugar perspective. So I went into I went into my office manager's office and she had a mug with them and I and I'm eating them and she's like, you realize because you know they all know I'm trying to be healthy. She's like, you know they're not sugar free. And I'm like, I'm aware of that. <laughs> and look at me, I'm still healthy. Oh my goodness. Yes. I'm fully aware of that. Yes. Thank you. All right. I think it's a good point too, because even healthy people can be blasted. Exactly. We, I mean, I was blasted today. <laughs> um, e, E is kind of a double one, right? It's. Uh, Go ahead. Eager or anxious. I like to use the word anxious, but blasted fits better with the E. Um, you know, excited, anxious, nervous. It's a feeling. Again, it's another emotional response and, and we have to settle it down. And we feel like, you know, come on, I'm, you know, Jewish mother, Jewish grandmother in my life. Like, ah, oh, you're okay. You'll be fine. Just, you know, have a little something to eat. <laughs> Calm yourself down. Just eat something. Um, that's not helpful. And then the last one. Distressed. Distressed. Ooh, that's heavy. Or get rid of the disc and just say stress. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I fit all these criteria. Paige, do you? Yeah. I don't know. Walt didn't talk about being sad and blasted in the in the ass, but I think he may have hit all the other ones, right? Yeah, I mean, I think stress is 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 always present uh, when we think about a relationship with food because um, sometimes we celebrate same sound right stressed sad um, food always plays a role sometimes in the activities we have and what is what does that relationship feel like and 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 how do we how do we put it in its right in its right place um, in our lives and I think that that's sometimes why we stumble in a self-care plan is because we, our relationship with food becomes so strong that I can't give that up. I can't, I need that. I do that every day. I eat that every day. I eat that, you know, four times a week, whatever. Um, and I think that, you know, we put up a protective um, force field around our, our relationship with food and our, our ch choices to change those behaviors or leave them intact, aside from just the emotional pieces that come with being blasted. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what people can do when they recognize that they're feeling blasted. So whenever oh. you're feeling one of these letters here, what are some things you can do to not use food? Because we know the foods we go to when we're feeling blasted are not healthy for us. So we wanna change that. So first is recognizing that we're feeling one of these feelings and then we can, Paige? I go for lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of long walks. Fabulous. Move your body. Now you can do it the long, long, long way or you can just walk for five minutes and I guarantee you that feeling's gonna pass, right? So stop, challenge, and choose. Yeah. So if you find yourself later tonight, but let's say you're just tired of listening to us, you're like, Ugh. I'm, like, I'm going to go eat. Well, wait a minute. Stop. Does your body need to be fueled right now? You know, we believe in the theory of eating every three hours, which is why I like food. I get to eat it all the time. Um, if I eat something healthy or eat something unhealthy, I'm still eating all the time. 
And so if you're tired tonight and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go get something to eat. Well, stop. Just, just pause. No, don't, no, excuse me. Don't pause, stop. Take a deep breath. And think, start engaging with, what do I want? Do I want this now for a temporary improvement, which is very temporary? Or do I want better health? Do I want a better relationship with food? Do I want to have more energy tomorrow because I'm fueling myself today better? We've talked a lot about the idea of the car, right? And the wheels that we follow, the four wheels of our program that um, direct us to where we want to go. And, you know, people put better gas in their cars to run across and do all their errands and go to work and travel than they put in their body. And so that's a relationship with food that we need to identify. And so when we are feeling something, stop, challenge what's going on, process the feeling, and then make a choice. It's okay to choose the insomnia cookie. <laughs> it's okay to choose two of them. That's what I do, but I stop there. Or choose to say, you know, not tonight. I'm not really having it. I'm feeling good with what I have. Um, what else can we do? Don't buy the peanut butter. Don't have it around you. Yeah, if that's the kryptonite. I have our peanut butter in the house for since that last one that I ate. I had one in two weeks in the house. Yeah. So take, take charge of your pantry. There you go. Choose, yeah. choose, stop, stop buying or stop doing the things that are driven by emotion and relationship or being blasted. Yep. And yep. put the things in your pantry that are fuels for your body so that you can, you know, fuel your body and give it energy and the proper nutrition, but not something you're going to run to um, in a moment of being blasted. The other thing that I've had um, encourage people to do is just write, write down what you're feeling, journaling, a sentence or two. Um, or read something that's helpful, encouraging, um, motivational. That's something else that sometimes works. A lot of people don't like to write, but if you start to understand why you're feeling a certain way, you can let that pass. Food is fuel for the body. It's not a treatment for feeling blasted. Um, and it just leads to perpetual health issues, which is what we want to help people prevent from having. Um, and then something else I do is I have, you know, the whole Jeopardy, what's that show? I forget, like phone a friend, whatever that show was, where you get to call a friend for help. Let's make a deal. Oh, let's make a deal, right? So call a friend, call a coach, call somebody, but just talk it out or just distract yourself, really. I think it's, if you can distract yourself from these moments and do something else, you're less likely to resort to the food. Um, any other thoughts you guys have on how people can respond to feeling blasted? I think that it's just about walking and talking the way you wanna be, right? And carrying out that plan that you create, right? So if you know that the worst thing you might wanna choose is go to an all you can eat buffet because you're gonna make those poor choices uh, maybe avoid the all-you-can-eat buffet. Um, if you feel like you're someone who's going to put way too much food on their plate, consider getting smaller plates and you'll give yourself the same impression of eating a full plate, but the plate won't be quite as large. Um, I believe it's also a suggestion that there's a certain color plate that sometimes plays a positive impact on people's choices around how they make that plate. Unfortunately, Sharon, I'm going to defer to you to the color. <laughs> yes, green and actually green. not white, just not white. Yeah. Anything you know, not white. Yeah. You should, if you look at your food on your plate and it's white and, and you have it on a white plate, you, it's a portion distortion. You, you can't really understand how much you're eating. Um, and, and I like the, uh, as you're talking, Walt, I'm thinking about the idea of, well, I have to feel full to feel like I can be done eating. Um, here's the problem, and I'm notorious for this. We eat too fast. When you're stressed out, what do you do? Oh, I gotta do this, and then I gotta go, right? I gotta eat real fast so I can go do more things. If you eat really quickly, 
your brain never gets the signal from your stomach that it's been descended physically. It's 20 minutes, everybody. 20 minutes for your body, your brain to say, food's in there, stop, because it can only come out at a certain speed. So you know that Thanksgiving dinner, like, oh, man. Like if you have that every day, we're overeating, right? So smaller plate, slow your meal time down. Chew, count your chews, okay? If you're chewing something, count how many times it takes you to chew something and swallow it and slow that down. These are little tips. Again, there's a lot of information tonight, but um, recognize, I think what's important is recognize your symptoms of blasted and then reach out to us for some ideas um, to review some of these concepts and to give you some of those tools um, to help counteract those feelings so that you can start to change your relationship with food. And I know Paige mentioned like holidays and going out and, you know, we have lots of tips on how do you handle going out with friends? You know, you don't want to be the, you know, the the table's going around and, you know, burger and fries, burger and fries, burger and fries. And all of a sudden you're like, I'll just have a salad, right? Does that make you feel weird? Well, there's some tips on how you can avoid that. And it's also it's your body, right? I'm not going to put junk in something that I only get to live in once, right? So again, a lot of ideas. I know we're a little bit all over iPods. I'm a little bit all over the place, but um, we thought being blasted was a, a great little topic especially as they're walking, moving into this fall season, right? It's cold. There's more cars on the road because people aren't vacationing anymore. School's in session. There's after school activities. We're tired. Um, start thinking about your relationship with food and, and share with us, what is it for you? And what, what, what tips would you like from us to help you overcome some of those um, emotions? Any final thoughts, Walt, Paige? I would just say that, you know, the secret to any relationship is um, having it in balance, right? Everything has to be in balance. And when you have your any relationship that you have um, with the job, with significant other, with children, with anything that you do, activities, everything in balance. And if you balance your day, um, you're usually going to come out ahead. So same thing in your relationship with food. Anything you can do to keep everything in balance, the better chance you have uh, of going through the day, not getting blasted. Fabulous. Thank you. I know we were a little bit all over the place. That's me. That was lack of prep. We had the concept and we went with it. You got us raw, real, talking about relationships and balance and and being blasted right out the gate. Hopefully you learned something tonight. Please give us some feedback. And we are live on YouTube. All of our episodes are active and available. And we're going to be launching this one um, within the next uh, 30 minutes tonight. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.